You are listening to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. This is Greg, and you are listening to Adventures in Zucosis Part 2. This is our shortest episode of all time. About a week ago or so, I got an email from a longtime listener of the podcast, Nate Meads, including a cover he made of Adventures in Zucosis. I listened to it, and I thought about what to do with the cover because he did a great job. So instead of shoehorning this cover into a different episode inappropriately, I thought a conversation about the tune would fit better. So I invited Nate on for a brief chat, and on this episode, we discussed being a fan of propaganda, the creative process he went through to make his cover, being a parent, and then we play the cover itself. This is a delight to have a chat about this tune, and just to revisit what an incredible song this is with a cover that I wish was in the original episode. If you want to go check out the original episode with Sammy Zayn and Dr. Christopher Jensen, you can find that as episode 21. Please enjoy my conversation with Nate Needs. Nate Meads, welcome to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. Thanks for having me. Nate, I'm delighted that you're here. And, um, you know, I'm wondering if we can just start off by having you introduce yourself a little bit to the audience, however you see fit. Um, My name is Nate Meads. I live in Chicago. I've been living here 20 some years uh, with my wife and our kids. I'm a loving father of two. Awesome. Um, and up through until like pandemic, I was um, working in kitchens and a, a pastry chef. I play in a band uh, called Kitchen Experiment, and it's Kitchen Experiment as a band and Kitchen Experiment as solo. And that's about it. Nate, tell me a little bit about your backstory. How did you get into music, playing punk rock, finding propaganda, all that stuff? Tell me, tell me a little bit of a backstory for you. I was one of those stories that uh, I had older brothers. They're like Mm -hmm. four years and six years older than me. So when I was little, like in the 80s, uh, you know, they listened to the big four, you know, like Iron Maiden and Megadeth, Metallica and Anthrax. And then that that worked into uh, like crossover stuff with like Corrosion Conformity and and GRI. And then uh, Misfits showed up. I also have the same story that many other uh, punk kids have well like older brother was where he's listening to misfits and then it, they're playing it's like where eagles dare yeah my dad opens the door and says i want this out of my house right yeah now. like I, I feel like a million people have that story oh yeah for sure um but yeah and like descendants showed up and that's like that grabbed onto me you know i grabbed onto that just like that it was relatable for me, not that I had any of the same issues that they did, but it was, you know, you're a little kid and it's like, yeah, I'm not a cool guy either. You know? Yeah. Then, you know, skateboarding, started skateboarding my friends, skate punk and stuff like fire hose and oh, uh, yeah. bad brains and bad religion and yeah. bad religion was a, a big thing where it like challenged uh, the beliefs that I was raised with was raised like in a Christian home. It's like very, uh, conservative town it felt like to me <laughs> man shout out the fire hose too i used to listen to fly in the flannel so much and oh, yeah. oh my gosh that band is so criminally overlooked so i'm just gonna just go ahead and put a, a pin in there and the fact that you said fire hose on this podcast i am i am really pumped what about what about propaganda where do they factor into the story for you sometime towards the end of high school so around 94 well, I guess whenever Survival of the Fattest came out, that's yep. when, like, but that whole comp was good. Yeah. So it wasn't like, I wasn't going out to buy every album on that. And so yeah. I kind of slept on it for a while. And then the, the one Live Fat, Die Young, that one yeah. had, uh, I think it had War is Peace. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it was like the re- those- it was like the revamp of Fine Day, I believe. That sounds that makes sense to me because I was like, yeah, I, I don't find anywhere else, but it was like, this sounds rad. And then, uh, when Back to the Motor League showed up on the following one, I was like, yeah. okay, well, I guess, I guess there's these guys can write more than one good song, and yeah. so like, got um, uh, got that album, 
across like the entire discography, do you have like favorite stuff by Propagandy? What's your kind of like your go tos? I got today's empires right, and that's rad. My wife, after that, bought uh, picked up how to clean everything. Yeah, so I was like, oh, this will be great. That was not my deal. Huh? Interesting. <laughs> not at all. I was like, oh, this is. I mean, I get it, but it's like it. It didn't like it didn't hit me in the same way. Interesting. So I slept on them for a while, and then a buddy told me about uh, failed states when that was coming out. I was like, holy crap, this is good. Yeah. And then victory lap, victory lap. That was blew it all out. It was like this is insane. I love it. I want to say like, oh, my favorite is going to be the next stuff, but I don't want to jinx it. Nate, we're going to uh, to hear something special uh, right now. A few days back, you sent me an email kind of out of the blue. You sent me a cover of you performing Adventures in Zucosis. I want to play that for the listeners, and then we're going to go ahead and have a chat about it, okay? So we're going to go ahead and play your cover, and uh, and then we'll we'll have a chat about what you've done here, okay? That sounds great. All right, let's do it. Let's hear Nate Meads performing Adventures in Zucosis. Population out. Think my only fear in death it may not be the end. That we may be eternal beings. We must do all of this again. Oh, please, Lord, let no such thing be true. Though I suspect, as I slink back to my enclosure, safe and warm. Adequately lit, sufficiently plumbed and ventilated. Let's just say I would not shake a stick, and if pressed, I'll admit I'm excited about the enrichment programs. Implement and extend our captive lifespans. I'm excited to see what our keepers have planned. Perhaps a bigger cage, longer chains, some compelling novel reasons to remain. That are we gonna die? Yes, son, both you and I. Maybe not today, boys. Bow to the keepers whip for so damn long. I think the sad truth is. This enclosure is where your old man belongs. But you, your hearts are pure. When the operant conditioners come to break you in, I'll sink my squandered teeth. You grab your little brother's hand, run like the wind. And if I'm not there, don't look back, just go. I don't give a fuck about the enrichment programs Implement and extend our captive lifespan Motherfucker gonna get a load of what I got planned Don't for me 
a wet heart feels Like, it feels really weird. Also, my eye feels better. And it's like... I want to hear the cover, or the story behind this cover told by you, because I love this cover, and I decided that we were going to do an Adventures in Zucosis mini-episode based solely on the fact that you turned this into me. And I wanted to make sure that it got appropriate attention on the podcast. So... Can you tell me the story of creating this cover? And I'm just, you know, excited to hear about it. That's funny. It's like I turned in a a paper like a year and a half late. Yeah, seriously. It was, I mean, it's just delightful. I couldn't have been more, more delighted that this happened. Um, all right. So listen to that episode. And I don't even, you know, that album's super rad. So when and that song particularly was meaningful. Um, so when you said that, I was like, well, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. I think you had talked about somebody singing it with like a country. Yeah. <laughs> it was supposed to be like. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I, when I play on my own, it kind of sounds a little bit ish like that. So and, uh, you know, and then it was like, all right, well, just do a Google search on how to play it. And uh, interesting, uh, there's a capo on the first fret. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I thought, wow, these guys are pretty mature. I don't know why, but using a capo to me means like, oh, you're, you're a bit more mature than, than just (laughs) your, your other standard guys. Yeah. Um, (laughs) um, So since I knew the song in my head and I, you know, I had to listen to it to like try and play along with it. I realized like there's no way I can like play it how they play it. Not exactly because they're it's much more technical and much more intricate. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I just went towards like the basic, like kind of not dumbed it down, but kind of smoothed out the the edges. Yeah. Yeah. Um and yeah, just started playing along with it, singing along with it. And uh, yeah, just put a put the phone in front of me and recorded it. And then it kind of sat on my computer for uh, about a year. I don't nice. know. It, it was a long time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like a few weeks ago, I just looked at it. I was like, well, I guess ah, I'm going to send it. It'd be funny if I sent it. I'll send it. So yeah. That was that. Awesome. You... But but it goes. Uh, there's some unique characteristics in your version in the form of sound clips that you inserted into it, and you know the editing that you that you went into. It was not just a straight up like recording it into your phone. I mean, you did a little more work to it. And I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit of the story about your your sound clips and things like that that you use because the sound clips in the original version are super important. And I want to hear about yours because you, you took it a little different direction. Uh, that's right. I forgot I did those. <laughs> um, so the sound clips in theirs are, so it sounds like to me, like it starts off like kids playing basketball in a driveway, you know, yep. that kind of pure, and then goes into that horrible stuff. Yeah. Trump, yeah. And, you know, ends kind of back on that, that, that high note. Um. And since like I was playing it, it's like I, it didn't it didn't feel right to like use the same stuff. Um, and you know, over over pandemic, just over the time I've been able to spend time with my kids, I do we just kind of like s- turn the phone on and record whatever is happening, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, uh, the the first so. Instead of the kids playing basketball, I used uh, my youngest humming along to crickets while we were out for a walk. Mm. And it was that same kind of feeling to me of that kind of pure thing. And then um, just like uh, they use another clip in another song of, of like a pig getting kicked and stuff. Yeah. And then like, I remember hearing like, they don't even want to like listen to that anymore. Like right. I wouldn't want to listen to, and I don't want to hear like 
Trump. Right. Well, I don't have to. Um, so I used what felt in a similar fashion to me of, of Fourth of July fireworks, you know, that same kind of like explosions and uh, go America, but maybe not as uh, intense, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and then when it came down to the end of it, so that's, it's my youngest son talking. Um, and he's like at that age, and he's kind of just always been this guy who likes to talk about farts, mm -hmm. you know, likes to, and is also kind of like the one who's like, so I have a question. What's the like most inappropriate word you've ever said? You know, and then just wants you to say like some sort of swear word. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> and that kind of innocence and, you know, makes me smile all the time. And I also remember on the, on the podcast, you had interviewed someone who was the, uh, say tour manager, but maybe it's just like a handler of sorts. Oh yeah, we, we yeah we talked about to uh, Katrin Vipper, the yeah. European tour manager for I believe it was the first bonus episode I ever did. I've done like twenty plus bonus episodes, and I think that was the first time I was ever like, this could be a standalone episode. So yeah, that one. Yeah, and uh, I remember at least I think I do. My memory is not great. Um, that like one of the things that they had all kind of uh bonded over a sort was uh fart jokes but i might be mixing that up with some other stuff i think that sounds right <laughs> and and uh so you know alfred talking about farts and all the different types of farts that he could hear and have it seemed it felt right and it felt like the same kind of good positive feeling got it nate what does this uh so you mentioned your your two kiddos i'm a dad myself and, you know, I've talked about parenting quite a bit on this show, um, especially in, in that Zucosis episode. And I'm wondering if you can just kind of summarize what this song means to you, because this is a really, really meaningful song to me. And I'm just curious what, what it means to you in the grand scheme of your life. So. Oddly enough, very much grand scheme of my life. Um the first half, it's just as a parent, it like it exposes like all these things that I felt and and dealt with, and like that feeling like I can't believe I haven't done more. I can't believe that all this stuff happens around me, and I'm not uh, more vocal. I'm I'm not particularly a vocal person. I'm not that person in the crowd in the um i'd like to say maybe a bit more reserved would be like a nicer way to say it mm -hmm. um, whereas i feel like i should be more profound pro just out of it yeah uh, or out there and um when it comes to like as soon as the like uh, dad, are we going to die? You know, those kind of questions, <laughs> those questions like totally come up. Like, how do you deal with that stuff? And you, you deal with it the best you can. Um, and, and, you know, you think the whole time, like, I really wish I would have started earlier making a better life for you guys. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like it's never enough. So you don't know how much if you've done enough, you yeah. know, like there's like, uh, you know, that stuff that's like, well, I'll, you know, just show up, just be there. And that's that's good. Yeah. It's like, man, I really feel like I should have done more, particularly with what they have to deal with. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the song tears me apart every time I hear it. Yeah, well, um, Nate, I'm really just delighted that you took the opportunity to to you know make this and also send it to me, and I'm really glad that I, I get to feature it on the show. 
as sort of a complimentary um, Adventures in Zucosis Part 2. And I feel like this kind of ties up a loose end for me as well, because uh, covers in the episodes really matter a lot to me. Um, do you have any, can you just like remind listeners where they can, you know, check out any of your music projects or anything like that, that you would like to direct people's attention to if they like what they heard and they want to hear more stuff by you? Oh yeah. Um, well I play, so it's all, it's on all the streaming stuff as far as I can tell of kitchen experiment, solo kitchen experiment band. Um, I think it's on YouTube as well. Yeah. That's where it is. Awesome. Well, Nate Meads, thank you so much for joining me for a mini episode to chat about your cover of Adventures in Zucosis and, you know, about being a dad and just kind of sharing the story behind this cover with the listeners of the Propaganda podcast. It means a lot that you took the time to do this with me today. Thank you so much for having me. Sleep back to my enclosure Safe and warm and adequately there Sufficiently plumbed and ventilated Well, let's just say I would not shake a stick And if pressed, I'll admit I'm excited about the original programs Implemented to extend our captive lifespans I'm excited to see what our keepers have planned Perhaps a bigger cage, longer chains, some compelling novel reasons to remain. Then are we gonna die? Yes, I'm both you and I. But maybe not today. Boys, I bowed to the keeper's whip for so damn long. I think the sad truth is. This enclosure is where your old man belongs But you, your hearts are pure When the operant conditioners come to break you in I sink my squandered teeth You grab your little brother's hand run like the wind And if I'm not there Don't look back Give a fuck about the original programs Implemented to extend our captive lifespans Motherfucker gonna get a load of